All right, hey, welcome to Vic Sports Center. We are standing next to the actual first six Ranger 621 FS ever made. We were fortunate enough here at the dealership to get the two showboats. We got the 620 and the 621. This particular one is a 2015, and they've made some really neat changes to the 621. And in your mind, you sit there and think, how could you get any better? The Ranger just keeps right on doing it. Every about five years, they try to give their boats a little bit of a tune-up, a little bit of a facelift, and it was time for the 621 to get uh, redone a little bit. And so basically what they've done is they have taken the 621 hull that everybody loves. They haven't touched the hull, but they made the boat a little bit wider, a little bit deeper, and they changed the interior. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by hopping over here to, to the motor area, show how they mount their motors with their kicker motor and everything like that, and then we're gonna hop up in this boat and go through all the new features that are on the new 2015. Okay, when we get to the back end here, one of the noticeable differences between the 2014 and the 2015 is the way they've put the, made the back end of their boat. So now everything is very flat here, all the way across, and you can look how they've really cleaned up the splash well using stainless steel mounts for the hydraulic steering for this particular Verano. If you look at the way they do their kicker motor package, mounted on a beautiful bracket, and then a big stainless steel arm between the two motors. Now that makes it very, that, that arm actually has got two universal joints on it, so it makes it very nice for when you're running the big motor with the little motor up or the little motor down and the big motor up. I know last time when I used one, I usually keep my big motor down when the little motor is also down. It seems to give me better boat control, but when I'm running the big motor, obviously we have to have that little motor up out of the water. But very clean back here. They put rubber step pads, which I know you can probably see across and see, but can't really see real close here. And they've also put a rod holder here. And they do have a pop-up cleat. And these are very nice. And the nice thing about pop-up cleats in this area is if you had just a regular cleat here, when you're running rods, you're gonna get your lines around these cleats all the time. With these, very heavily done, pushing them in and out, very clean, very smooth. So everything is very smooth very flat and very clean on the back end of this boat. Also, which is a new great feature on the 2015s, is your drain plug is now a valve, okay? So right now we're standing here, my drain plug is in. All I do is turn a little knob, and boom, my drain plug is out. Now the greatest thing about that is, let's all be honest, we've all forgot to put our drain plug in before. If you're in the water, all of a sudden you start noticing your bilge pump kicks on, your auto bilge, or you're getting some water in the bottom of the floor, you just reach back here, flip your lever, and now your drain plug is in. No more reaching underneath the boat, especially with these double motor uh, application here. It's kind of tough to get down there and put a threaded in drain plug. So yes, we're all getting a little bit lazier, and it's awful nice to have just a flip lever. Okay, here we are on the other side, on the uh, starboard side of the boat now. And a couple things I want to show you that is standard now is the beautiful swim ladder. Okay, very nice. A lot of people say, I don't need a swim ladder on the back of a 621. I got to tell you, most of the people that fish out of a 621 are uh, definitely the guys that are going to go early spring, late fall when it's cold. I can tell you that we just got done running a walleye tournament out of Ashtabula. I do know that there was a guy netting a fish, actually went out of the boat. And I'm going to tell you, without that ladder, I don't know how easy it would have been to get that gentleman back in the, in the boat. When you have your gear on and it fills up with all kinds of water, it makes it very difficult to get in and out of the boat. Uh, also, when there's three or four footers. So having a ladder is an incredibly great idea. Just grab it, pull it down, get up in your boat. Another thing to look at back here, they now have the battery charger is down in the floor. And we'll go over that here in a second. But they actually have the plug for your battery charger goes in here. So all you do is take your extension cord, plug it in, and then again, looking at the back side of the boat, look at how clean everything is. Everything's all completely redesigned. Very clean, very modern looking. Okay, here we are, and our camera guy's up on the front deck of the boat, looking down into the boat. And this is the area that they've really, really changed in this particular boat. Uh, the front decks <clears throat> are very similar to the old ones. But what they've actually done is taken and widen, widen the interior of the boat. The distance from here 
all the way over to this gunnel is about six inches wider compared to the 2014. Then the distance from this box here over to this box here is around five and a half inches wider. So what a lot of people have asked for in the Rangers is a wider walkable area right here when you're working rods. So now with the new wider, they basically took and thinned the gunnels up so the interior of the boat just wider. The boat itself didn't get a whole lot wider. It was just basically the interior of the boat that got wider. Because they, again, they did not change the hull. The other thing they did is down in the floor, they put a rubber non-skid on. You know, when we had the, uh, on the 2014s, we had snapping carpet on the floor. If you pulled it up, there was the fiberglass non-skid. And fiberglass non-skid, we noticed it very slippery, especially in the, when it got cold outside. So most people were running with their carpet, which we all like carpet, but it was definitely a little harder to keep clean. So now they're using a rubber non-skid on the floor. You can order it with snap-in carpet if you'd like, but it is uh, standard now with the rubber coated floor. They also changed that down in the floor, we now have a box that has all four batteries in it. Before, we had the three trolling motor batteries, we had a starting battery, or, or I'm sorry, we had all the batteries in, in, in the floor, but the battery charger was over in the side compartment. Now, we have all four batteries, and we have the charger in this compartment. So it does make the back two corners are completely open for tapping. The other nice thing about this is they actually made it recessed in here so the batteries actually fit in. All we have to do is put a battery strap in there, no battery trays. It's actually recessed and set up for batteries already. So a great compartment here. Live well wise, they didn't change the, really the size of the live well, but they did redesign the top a little bit. They put a little corner spot over here with a drain in it. If you want to have, keep worms in here, and keep them washed. Um, calling bobbers, if you're in some sort of tournament that you want to use calling tags, anything you want, you can keep it here. They also changed the location in, of the shock absorber. They actually recessed the door a little bit so the shock absorber straight on really holds these lids up well. They did that in all the compartments, which does definitely make it very nice. Um, but also, it keeps the shock absorber from being right here in the middle, where it was constantly getting wet and then rusting that shock absorber and hurting it. So they're always figuring out ways to make it just a little bit better than they have on this, in this particular boat. Again, storage in this corner. Storage here. This particular box is carpeted, and the box on this side over here is fiberglass. Now, we did do late tests with it this weekend, so I was having full of life jackets. I didn't know how many people I was going to have for boat rides. So I filled it up with nice Ranger life jackets. All the compartments are lit, if you order it that way. Um, and then we can also get some interior lights in this cockpit area. Um, so it does make it very nice if you're going to be doing any night fishing or early morning when you're rigging rods. You can have some extra light around. The other thing, if you notice, what they did do is they made a nice flat area here. Okay? But they did away with the carpet that used to go here and the carpet that used to go here. These are now tool holders. So you can put your pliers, your hemostats, whatever you'd like, right along these lines. Okay? You can also, now that you have a nice flat area here, you can put a RAM mount here or a Cisco mount or any kind of electronics mount. We have a lot of our customers that will put a, a nice fish finder GPS up on the bow, but when they're not using it on the bow, they'll put it on a Cisco mount or a RAM mount, then we'll move it to the back. So when they're trolling, they're not really ever looking forward. They're trolling, you know, when, when you're trolling with the iPilot, you can actually sit there and look at a GPS and uh, catch a fish at waypoint and go. And it's completely out of the way being there not in the way of running rods or netting or anything else. So again, very clean back end. The other thing they have done is put rod holders, one on each corner. So we now have rod holders. And this particular boat does have hand rails on it, but when they flatten those gunnels out, you can now do 72 inch tracks or 80 inch tracks, whatever you'd want down the side. And the top deck of the boat is very flat and you'll be able to run a super long track down that side if you want it for the versatility of the track. So um, they did change some other areas. We're going to reposition the camera and check out a little different area of the boat.
Okay, moving from the back deck head and forward towards the consoles, a couple of neat little items, and, and a lot of people don't really think about this one much, but this one was a great one, actually, when I was doing test runs this weekend. I was actually going to fish a little bit, but with the kids it was pretty rough, and I didn't want to get one of them seasick. But uh, having a net board, you can now slide the handle of your net right in here. And it's not real super deep, but when you leave it out a little bit, it lays your net flat, and that non-skid, it doesn't bounce around. I mean, just a great, great feature on the boat. Might sound small, but I gotta tell you something, it's way better than putting it over a seat in the front or trying to lay it down the side where your net's always getting banged around. Now it lays perfectly nice in the floor. When you get out there, put it up in a net holder or throw it on your front deck, that's fine. But when you're running down the lake, that's a great feature. Another thing that they've done, put a little storage area down here with a couple tackle trays. Everyone says, well, it's only two tackle trays, but that's not the big thing about that. For us, as a dealer, when we're rigging these boats, having a tray that pops back, that we can get in there and rig. So, if we're going to do anything over here, electronic-wise or lights-wise or anything like that, we now have a way to get from that console to this console and down this gunnel if we need to. Um, which is very difficult in the Ranger because, like I said, it's solid foam, but they're giving us a rigging tube over here and they're giving us a way to get across the front right there by the console. So it's a huge feature for us um, and it just cuts down time if we're putting any uh, dealer installed options in for our customers. Okay, here we are over at the port console, and uh, a couple things that they've changed with this particular console area is they have completely redesigned the glove box. Now, it might not sound, sound like a big deal, but the old glove box um, was a, a little taller glove box area, but it also had just a plastic latch on it, and that caused a little bit of an issue. They've now gone with a metal latch on the glove box. You open it up, there's a 12-volt receptacle in there. Your MP3 player port, if you have a stereo in the boat, and it is lighted, so it's very nice if you're plugging your cell phone or whatever you need to do, that glove box is all set up for you. Put a nice stainless steel handle here. Here's our uh, Jensen radio. But then it, down along the side, where before we used to have a little rod holder down here, and then you had a rod ramp that went over here with a bungee, or a strap, I'm sorry, to hold your partner's rods. Now we have an area for three rods, okay? Just to give you an idea, this is an 8-foot rod here, so you can easily put a 9-foot rod down the side, maybe 10-foot, okay? So I have my three trolling rods right there. Um, the tubes go all the way up front, makes it very nice for a couple extra rods, especially if you have long ones that aren't going to fit up front. We definitely have some long rod capability here. Um, another grab handle here. Another thing while we're here, we can talk a little bit about the windshields. Now, windshields have always been an interesting thing for rangers and for any boat, but with the bubble windshields compared to the glass windshields. Before, as a dealership, if we ordered in a boat with a full, full windshield, and a customer came in and said, hey, Tommy, I'd love to have that boat, but I want bubble windshields, we can now interchange windshields, okay? So the bubble windshields actually have the same track. So we can take off the bubbles, or the, the full windshield, and we can put bubbles on. So it's going to work out very nice for the dealership, but it will also work out very nice for the consumer. There's a lot of customers that want to have a full windshield for the spring and for the fall, but choose to have bubbles for summer because they claim that in the windy season they can actually have better boat control. To me, it never really seemed how that great. I, I always really liked the full windshield, but every person has their own idea of what do they want in the perfect boat. So Rangers set it up that we can actually have both. So really neat feature that you can interchange windshields now from the bubbles to the full windshield and vice versa without having a bunch of holes showing up on your boat. Okay, here we are over at the starboard console. Now a couple things that they've changed here. Yeah, they've redesigned it and have a little different touchpad now. But really, the, the most important thing to us is the way they've set up the fish finder area. We have an 1199 Hummingbird in that dash, okay? And before, for us to do an 1199 built-in and then do any kind of big unit on top, believe me, we had to get very creative. We had to use a special Cisco mount with a wedge and everything else, and we really had to design and really place everything perfect so that that fish finder that was up there would not go up and hit the windshield, number one, and number two, that you could actually see 
and, and the, the, the unit. So now they put a perfectly flat area up here. So we're going to be able to screw right directly to that. If we are going to use any kind of mount, like a RAM mount or a Cisco mount or something like that, we'll be able to do it, but we don't have to have any kind of shims or wedges in order to do that. So they gave us a great area here. Redesigned this area a little bit. The gauge package looks incredible. They did also change the, the push button, and they've actually changed the 621 to have the same, some of the same features of like the 521 bass boats. And a lot of people, when they're looking at a Ranger, um, they look at it and say, God, this thing's built extremely well. But one thing that a lot of people don't realize, unless they've actually watched the videos on how a Ranger is built, is there's not a whole lot of air travel in any of their compartments in a, in a Ranger boat. And the reason is, is because the gunnels, the sides of the boat are, are completely filled with foam. Now that's a great thing for long-term durability, um, for flotation, if anything, God forbid, ever happens, you have the most, you know, the, the, tons and tons of flotation in this boat. But the one thing about it, again, we don't get much airflow. So with that being said, now, at the end of the day, let's say you go out there and you fish all day and it was a rainy day or rough day or what have you, and you have any condensation going on in your boat, you just basically, leave your, your switch on in the back so you actually have some power going to your dash. And you turn on the fan button. And when you turn on the fan button, it actually has fans all in the front compartments. It actually circulates air in there. So to keep your compartments from getting moldy or getting any condensation in there, it's going to blow air through all your compartments, especially your rods and reels, so your reels don't get all rusted up, hooks don't get rusted up up there. Just a great feature just to tweak the boat just a little bit more. So now, have a fan system, and when we when we order these boats, we always get four bank chargers. So it's start it's charging the starting battery and all three of your trolling motor batteries. That's in, that's great, when, especially when you run the fan. As you have it plugged in, you're charging your battery, but you're also draining it a little bit with your fan, and you're still going to walk out the next morning and have a fully charged battery. You're not going to worry about having a dead battery. So again, all push button starts, digital gauge here for your mercury, so you can actually watch digitally what that motor is seeing. So you can see digital RPMs, uh, amount of gas used, fuel range, all that kind of stuff can all be done in your SmartCraft gauge right over here. Um, as you can see also, we do have the second set of controls. So you can be sitting right here at the driver's seat, start, steer, and do everything, your 9-9 kicker. So uh, very convenient, very easy to use. Everything's right at your fingertips. It's almost like a spaceship cockpit area. But it's all ready to go for you. And uh, you can just sit in your driver's seat and push buttons. And uh, have a great day fishing. All right, we're starting to move up onto the front deck right now. And you know, a boat like this, a lot of people say, oh, this is a tournament walleye boat. Well, I gotta tell you, we're starting to get a lot of guys that are tournament smallmouth fishing even purchasing these boats because they're, they're usually working on uh, fishing up at Lake Erie most of the time, that rough water all the time, St. Clair, Detroit River area, and they're buying six series boats so they can drive out there in comfort, stay dry, and uh, not that their bass boats don't ride great, but you know, when you, whenever you can have this much deeper of a haul than a bass boat, Ranger just does an incredible job of making it just that much better. But they do have an incredible center rod locker. And the center rod locker is very similar to our bass boat rod lockers. And just to give you an idea, I have one, two, three, four rods in here right now, and I'm only using the bottom line. So you have, uh, you can put 12 rods in here very easily, okay? And then like I said, you can put three down the other side that if you have real long rods. And those long rods, that's gonna be great for our musky fishermen that are using eight, eight half foot rods also. But uh, in here, I basically have my trolling rods, I did have some dipsy rods in here earlier, um, but I took those out already. But again, double shock of hoop absorbers holding up the, the lid. One thing about it also that a lot of people don't realize is if you're looking at uh, a lot of boats and you look at lids and you don't think too much about lids, um, Ranger lids are actually very thick. If you put your fingers over the side of the lid, you realize that they're about a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. And that's because there's a layer of fiberglass, then there's a core, and then there's actually like an insulation core, a foam core, and then another layer of uh, fiberglass. What that does, again, it starts to cut down on how much condensation you get in your boxes. Here in Ohio, unfortunately, we don't get that great of weather that we have to worry so much about having, you know, 100 degree weather down to 60 degree weather and getting all that condensation. But down south, um, it definitely really, really changes everything when you have a very insulated lid. 
that sun beating down and not letting all that heat into your boxes, it really, really helps you out. So we can close these. One thing also is whenever they're on all their compartments, they're using compression lid latches. So they're stainless steel, and when you put them down, it actually sucks the lid down. So it makes it suck right up against a double beaded rubber trim. It makes it very, very waterproof, about as good, as good as it gets. Also, in the corners, they have troughs that don't actually have drains. So these, these compartments will all drain, which is great. So they're either going to drain this direction or they're going to drain to a drain. And that makes it very nice for if you get stuck out there in an all-day rain. Okay, we're over here on the front deck on the port side. And as you can see with the lid up, there's a great storage box here. Now in this storage box, it is an all glass storage box. It has a fan in there to keep everything dry like we talked about earlier. Up front here, there's actually a trough that runs behind this box and goes to a drain over in the corner. This particular box is, is about set like this. I know it's tough for the camera to see. And then right in front of the console, there's actually a large cooler for your pops and waters and all that kind of stuff, and a bunch of ice. So again, front deck wise, cooler than all storage here. Now when you close these, this locker, again, they pull down. Now we get to an area where you can lay some rods. And they do have boat buckles up on the front of this deck. So you can have your rods here. Now, on this particular boat, on the starboard side, they actually put a hole in the console so that we can actually lay rods here. The tips can go through the console so you can have, say, your perch rods or your bass fishing rods up on the front deck held into the, into the bungee. Up front here, we also have tool holder. And as you can see, a big 11 series hummingbird right set up up front here. And this particular boat does have an 11.99 here and 11.99 at the dash. And with that, this particular trolling motor has what's called the eye link. So this eye link, let's say we're on Mosquito Reservoir, and we want to set it to follow the 12-foot contour line. We can hit a couple buttons on our eye link controller, and it will hold us on the 12-foot contour line. Now that would be just incredible <coughs> for structure walleye fishing, or for smallmouth fishing. I know there's some spots over in Canada where there's some long breaks that just go like this and you can put, a, put that trolling motor on and tell it to stay on the 21 foot mark and it'll just keep you right on that break. And the amount of work that takes away from you, the fisherman, is amazing. So very, very easy to use, very convenient. But most of the time with our eye pilots up on the front, especially up on Lake Erie for walleye fishing, we're using this to steer the boat, okay? And so, like, I was up salmon fishing a couple weeks ago up at Point Breeze. Put my trolling motor down. I started my kicker. I used the kicker to push me. We were going about 2.2 two to 2.4 speed-wise. And I had this particular item, my, my iPilot on number four, four and a half, fine-tuning my speed and driving me the whole time. So I could concentrate on what was going on in the back when you're running dipsies and downriggers. When you're running those downriggers, man, that, man those, those king salmon hit, you've got to dive for that rod or those steelhead and, and dive. So it was very nice being able to let that trolling motor drive for you, <coughs> wash rods, concentrate on rods, make sure nothing's getting tangled. Um, and, and there's a lot of times that when you're walleye fishing, you're catching a lot of junk fish, not having to drive your boat and be able to clear a rod or pull a rod in, take a white bass off or a perch off, throw them back and get that rod set again. Especially if you only have two guys in the boat, that eye pilot is the king. It, it, it really, really cuts down on a lot of work that you're doing in that boat. Okay, here we are over on the starboard side on the front deck, and as you can see, we have our bait well here. Now, the one nice thing about their bait well is they actually send you with a bait bag, okay? And the bait bag is designed that if you're going to get minnows or creek chubs or even if you're using big shiners, the nice thing about the bag is you throw it in there, you put your, trunk, your, your bait well on recirculate, it sits there and circulates the water, keeps that, those, that bait alive. The other nice thing about a bag is the fish can't, when you're running down the lake, the fish can't get rammed against the side of the boat. Now it might sound funny, but they've done a lot of studies that if you're sitting there running down the lake and you hit a wave wrong, let's say, and it throws the boat a little bit, and that, that shiner gets running and smashes its nose into the side of that 
bait well, it will actually kill it. So with the bait bag, it's actually soft, and they found that the bait stays alive a lot, lot longer. Okay. Also up front here is the slot for your, for your rods. Okay. And that particular slot comes all the way back to about the shifter, right to here, just to give you an idea. So you probably get seven foot rods on the front deck running through your console. That's a big deal for the guys that are smallmouth fishing or like I said, perch fishing, or if you're casting for walleye. If you're in the Detroit River and you want to lay your rods up there, you put four or five rods there, put the tips in there, and go. And that's just a, a great, great feature. Just again, tweaking what was considered to be the ultimate walleye boat has just made it just a little bit better. This is all storage and this is a new boat. All I had was, I threw life jackets in there. I still had my, my manuals and everything still in the boat, but that's just a great storage box. And again, when you turn them, pull them down, sucks those lids right down into place, makes those compartments as dry as possible. It just doesn't get any better. Um, you know what, the way this boat's laid out now, with more room in the back, with everything they've done, they've even put a measuring board, I know we missed it when we were going before, but they put a big measuring board right into a slot, right back here in the back, very easy to get to. They've made these boats so user friendly that it's just absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, leave it to Ranger to come up with just a little bit nicer 621 than what they've ever had before. All right, here we are. We're up at the front end of the 621 Ranger, and there's a couple new features up here that they've done on the new 2015. I just want to go over them. Um, first of all, navigation lights are now built in, okay? So no more walking up and putting a front light pole. There is no more front light pole. Again, just tweaking them out a little bit more and making things a little more solid. I will tell you that it doesn't really matter what boat company, there's always trouble with that front light pole. Whether it's from the shock of that light pole breaking something, whether it's breaking the bracket that it's sitting in, people hitting them and breaking them, uh, or just flat losing their pole or something as such, front light pole has always been a little bit of a problem. So now Ranger has built in their navigation lights here. Um, working our way down, they still, on this particular boat, we do have the touring package, so we do have the parking brake, which I gotta tell you has been a great feature. Whenever you're in a garage situation, you clamp it down, the boat can't move. The other nice thing is, even with, with our, my truck with a backup camera, I get close, but then if I need to move it forward an inch or back an inch, I can release the brake and push the boat wherever I want, lock it down, and then put the ball on the hitch. Um, just a super, super nice feature, this parking brake. Another thing that's very nice is they actually recessed the haul a little bit for the keel guard. Okay? May not sound like a big deal, but I gotta tell you, a keel guard is now standard and it's almost invisible on this boat. It's perfectly flat. Now I think the Ranger, the reason Ranger did that was for number one, cosmetic reasons, making it look a little bit nicer, tweaking the boat again. Um, but also this haul. This V comes down so deep on this particular boat that on some ramps we were having the keel guard was actually hitting the keel roller on this trailer so hard it was actually cutting it. Okay, so now if you look at it, it's perfectly flat and we won't have any trouble hitting that roller and hurting that, uh, that roller on this trailer. Because they really, really cradle these boats onto the trailer. Ranger trail trailer, all C channel, so no water holes in the frame, um, all road armor, so you don't have any problems with paint or rusting. Uh, just incredible trailers. And I tell people, you know, it's a huge part of the boat purchase is your trailer. Having the fiberglass fenders, the road armor trailer is huge. You know, we see a lot of five and ten year old boats that are other brands. Their trailers are shot because they're painted. In Ohio, we have salt. You pull them any time in the spring or any time in the fall, you get a little salt on those trailers and they're in trouble. And so with these, plus they're holding water. With these, all sea channel, everything drains, everything's perfect. Absolutely the world's greatest trailers for sure. So, you know, we've gone over a lot of stuff on the 621. I hope I've done it justice because it's just an amazing machine. Um, if, if anyone would like to come take a look at them, come on over here to the shop. If you can call us at the shop if you need any more information at 330-673-7600. You can go to VicSportsCenter.com or VicsBoats.com. Check out videos. Check out our inventory. But we are going to try to stock a lot of these boats. It's an incredible boat with a lot of nice features. Again, it's just completely refined. And uh, what an amazing machine. 
It, uh, it, it really is. It, in person here and on the water, it's absolutely incredible. So I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.